Who would have thought that a concept like this would grow so big? Somebody do a QC on them fries. We need to evolve it a little bit, but then I want the brand story to come to life. You in my house. You in the house that Reese built. <laughs> I got BET in the house that Reese built. Come on now. Black women have always been bosses. From shaping the next generation to creating the latest innovation, we constantly raise the bar. Black women are blazing trails in the field of entrepreneurship and making ways in almost every industry. And it's time to illuminate black girl magic in this new docuseries about her business. Since 1943, New York Fashion Week has given people an exclusive look at the finest designer fits and the emerging trends in the fashion world. Black women light up the runway on this special New York Fashion Week edition of About Her Business. Memphis native Brandis Daniel has played an essential role in placing black women on the map in the world of high fashion. I discovered fashion when I was in Memphis growing up. It was just one of those things I was always drawn to. My mom actually sewed like most of our clothes. So it's just always innately been a part of me and just like what I loved. It just took me a while to make the decision to actually pursue it as a career. We've been in business for 12 years. It really started from an idea. Um, I went to a fashion show in Brooklyn, and while I was there, was really inspired to do the same in Harlem. I knew that it was so much bigger than a fashion show, but I just didn't know what was pulling me towards this, what was getting me to a place where I could not stop talking about this idea. And when the event happened, I felt like I had like just birthed something, like the beginning of something really special. So the very first year of Harlem's Fashion Row, it was a fashion show in Harlem, um, mostly boutiques. So it was boutiques that were owned by designers. After I started to research how many designers of color were in the market, out of hundreds of designers, like how many of these are actually like a person of color? I realized I couldn't really find any. And that for me was like my moment when I was like, okay, this is why I started Harlem's Fashion Row. It was never about an event. It was because I was being pulled to be a part of the solution for designers of color in the fashion industry. No one was ready to talk about race and fashion in 2007, 2008, 2009. And then a couple years ago, the conversation started to evolve to designers. And that was like the moment I had been waiting for. I was like, this is the door, it's cracked, like let's go. 2017, we celebrated our 10th year that year. And when I tell you everything that could go wrong went wrong, I mean everything. And so after that event, I said, you know what? I'm never gonna stop doing my purpose. I'm never gonna stop doing whatever I can to support designers of color. However, it can look differently because I'm really open to whatever happens next. I said the only thing I really would love, I would love to partner with a brand and bring a product to life. So, I got an email from Marissa Nance. And so we got on the phone with her and she gave us this very cryptic message about this like athletic company who wanted to talk to us and they were looking for black female designers. And, and she's like telling me like about something that LeBron had said in a like a internal Nike meeting that like black women were the strongest and she really wanted to do something with that statement and really honor black women for his next shoe. I said to her, I said, I'm getting goosebumps right now. Like I can't explain it, but I feel like this is about to be something really big. And she was like, I'm so happy you feel that way because I feel the same way. She said, just send me over like some names and some websites of some people you think would, would be a good fit. I thought, should I go retro? Should I go old school? Should I go mainstream designers who are out there doing great things already? And then I thought, that 10 year was not just hard for me. It was also hard for the designers who were a part of it. And I just felt like if, if I'm gonna submit names, it should be those women who were with me. They were supposed to pick one designer and end up picking all three. And so we launched the shoe and have LeBron's full blessing, the Nike team's full blessing. And that shoe, when it sold out in like five minutes, I think that was a turning point for HFR, for sure. This year my goal was to do something easy. 
We're actually honoring Sierra with our highest award of the night, which is our Icon 360 for her work in business, um, philanthropy, and fashion. We're actually launching um, a curated website for designers called In the Black at this event. It's gonna be featuring eight new designers every eight weeks. And then we've got these incredible designers that, you know, I just could not be more excited to introduce to everyone that's there. The platform is amazing and, and with it being as amazing as it is, it's uh, even more exciting and important because at the end of the day, it's still more work that needs to be done for designers of color to showcase at New York Fashion Week, uh, to show things more other than just streetwear. Um, we, have, we have views and we have different visions and different point of style and design and um, points of, for ourselves, so to have this platform is just allowing us to tell our story on a, a bigger, to a bigger audience. What I want people to get from me um, after this show is to understand my purpose. Don't just look at the clothes and see, you know, the prints. You can't just look at that. You got to see what is it about. It's like when you put these on, you're supposed to be already saying, I'm in a better life. And these clothes make you smile. We're so grateful for you all. I wanted to kind of see where we are. If you have not gone through makeup, if you can get on this. If you have any questions, find me or find one of our staff members. They are now wearing credentials. Um, that's it. Have fun. It's such a beautiful evening of really beautiful people who are doing incredible things in this industry. The first year, it was definitely like super Harlem based. Um, now it's for sure become um, an event that attracts international press. Even though celebrities are there and it is full of influencers, it really does feel like a family reunion. Like I hope that it never, ever, ever loses that feel. Like, I always wanted to feel like we're all there for one common purpose, is to like love and accept each other. On the way, emerging designers paint New York Fashion Week black when they show off their eccentric styles. And get a peek inside the New York Fashion Week Accessories Lounge. This is about her business. Black girl magic dazzles at this year's New York Fashion Week with black women revolutionizing fashion one brand at a time. Miko Underwood, the founder of Oak and Acorn, is creating her own lane with the first sustainable denim brand in Harlem, New York. I think that just the one. I don't think we need the white one. Fashion comes easy to me, and I, I think that art is always a way that a person can express something in a very powerful way. I felt like this brand has my DNA in it. It has a part of who I am as a black woman. It has who I am as an indigenous person. It has something to it that connects so much with community. I think that's really important today to be able to do that. That outfit looks so good on him. So good on him. And the way he walks, he's incredible. Oh, you've been in touch with him? Yeah, he's, he's been texting me. Yeah. If I'm going to call myself the first sustainable denim brand in Harlem, that means that I'm not only going to be aware of the type of products that I use when I'm making my products and making my collection, but I'm also aware of how am I impacting my community. If I'm just standing on the soapbox talking about it, it's not as interesting, but if I can use what I say as a space to be able to express something larger that can help a wider audience, then I want to do that. So I found that I was going to participate in Harlem Fashion Roll when I was on my computer one night. I got a message from Brandis. She called me, and it's uh, three weeks before we show. And she tells me, I really I, I love everything that you're doing, and I, I want you to be a part of this. This runway experience for Oak and Acorn, only for the Rebels, you're going to be transported. You expect to be moved. I want people to walk away with being educated and informed. I want them to be moved. I want them to think about the way they consume, a way they impact their community. That's, that's what I would like people to walk away with.
pretty much the first and actually I can even kind of I know that second. Yeah. That's about the right flow. Zambian fashion designer Kapasa Musanda has not only made this year's Forbes Africa 30 under 30 list, but is also showing off her styles. I would say my style is eclectic and orthodox and individualistic. I don't think style has anything to do with where you are, where you come from, what race you are, where you're based. Like style is an individual expression. My name is Kappa Samsonda and my label is Mengishi Dong. We're at Harlem's Fashion Row, the biggest show of my life. To see each piece come to life was really emotional and to see the hard work that my team from Zambia has put in and to have traveled so far. So this was definitely me stepping out of my comfort zone. I can't explain it. I never thought that I could make it if I wasn't in America. But here I am today. So many doors have opened and I'm, I'm ready for them. It's my time. This is bigger than me, it's bigger than my brand. I have the continent of Africa on my back because I feel like I'm representing so many African designers who may not get this opportunity, but getting to see me do it, then I know that it gives them hope. I'm just grateful to be able to be here. In a minute, footwear designer Salome Monet reveals how her shoes caught Beyonce's attention and we get an all-access pass to the New York Fashion Week Accessories Lounge. Stay tuned for more on About Her Business. In 2015, the Black Accessories Designers Alliance was created to empower black accessory designers and provide opportunities for exposure. This year, the Alliance hosted a New York Fashion Week Accessory Lounge featuring a community of black designers. The Black Accessories Designers Alliance was created out of frustration with the lack of people of color within the fashion industry. We felt that if we came together and pooled our resources and helped each other, it would be able to build a great community of accessory designers. Everett is a custom handbag design company, which is me made out of recycled jeans, that's how it got started, and now I add leather and suede and accessories and hardware to make them pop and to make them bags that a woman, young woman, older woman can use, transition from work to play, weekend, carrying your laptop computer, whatever you want to do with it, and they're custom made by me. My name is Lena Kreku. Um, I am the founder and the creative uh, designer of Kreku Jewelry Design. I came up with the line because I was looking for some different pieces. Wanting to look for pieces of jewelry that respected the culture, I couldn't find anything that I wanted. So I decided to make them myself. And so I went home, found some Ghana beads, um, talked to my father, and the brand was born. I'm the owner of the Dazzling Accessories, which is a curated space for black accessory designers, and I showcase their products on my website and in retail store. What I do is I go and I find different African American, Hispanic, people of color who handcraft their pieces, and then I put it within my store, and then I resell it. It's providing a haven and a space for black accessory designers. I think it's extremely important for an event like this, especially for black designers, because we 
don't get an opportunity to showcase our things in an intimate setting like this. People come and actually feel and touch the, the products and get a feel for the designers who are designing the products. I think it's huge. And I'm happy to be a part of it. I think it's very important for designers of color to be visible in New York fashion room because you're always looking for someone that looks like you. This event is extremely important for black designers. Being a member of Black Accessories Designers Alliance is extremely important because it helps you find a community, a space. As an entrepreneur or a designer in general, you need somebody to be able to throw, throw feedback to. And that's what we do at Black Accessories Designer Alliance. We connect you with others using resources and empowering each other. Coming up, Gabrielle Union and Beyonce have both worn the shoe brand Salon Monet. And up next, Salone herself will reveal how she's about her business. Black designers like Salone Monet are stepping through the doors of New York Fashion Week with their eclectic brands of shoes. Salone is a footwear entrepreneur who has a signature collection of new shoes that have been worn by Gabrielle Union and Beyonce herself. Now, she's revealing how her reach continues to soar and expand exponentially. A new shoe or a nude shoe makes, you know, a woman feel really good. I always say that it's kind of like when you first get a fresh haircut. It adds that, like, extra bounce in your step because you see your shoes probably more than anyone, so it's really important that they're, you know, made for you and they make you feel good. So the great thing about my shoes is that you can actually incorporate it with everything you already own because they're designed to match you and not your outfit. So it kind of creates this, you know, effortless silhouette on the leg. It makes your legs look longer. If you have like a difficult to style piece, new shoes are like the must have accessory that you can incorporate many ways into your wardrobe. Salone Monet is a color-inclusive nude shoe company. I create six different colors across the skin tone spectrum from nude, like super light, to um, deep pigments. I decided to just create a shoe line when I was actually working at a shoe store in DC about seven years ago. I was um, actually going through a training session and my manager was suggesting that we should always offer a nude heel to anyone who came in to try to bolster sales. But we only sold one color, so that was a light bulb moment for me. It's like clearly this is an opportunity that's um, you know missing in the market and you know someone needs to fill it. I didn't necessarily go into it thinking that this was going to be a new career path. I figured if someone else was enjoying it, why not me? almost uh, six years of research and development, of working my business plan, of searching for suppliers and searching for factories uh, and designing shoes, um, a lot of mistakes and errors along the way, but ultimately um, I launched last year. The response from the consumer has been very exciting. People are like relieved that something like this finally exists, that we're making nude heels for women of color specifically. My first big break was when Beyonce actually wore my shoes. My shoe brand became you know, something that people were discussing across the country. That was incredible. You know, raising brand awareness is really difficult, uh, especially for a business that you know, doesn't have like a large sponsorship. Uh, with BADA, and that stands for the Black Accessories Designers Alliance. And so this is the second time that I presented with them during Fashion Week. So I'm here collaborating with other black designers um, of accessory brands in New York City. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a great opportunity. We have um, some food, we have drinks, music, and a lot of people who enjoy fashion during Fashion Week. I will yeah. say this, I, your shoe is literally the only one I've ever tried on in my life. During the time of research and developing and working on my business during those six years, I had gone from thinking that I was going to be offering a shoe that was like, you know, priced around $100, $120 to offering the affordable luxury product that you see today. A lot of people are interested in pumps and, you know, other styles, so that's currently what I'm working on. You can expect new shoes and new styles in the future. If I'm going to put this on the market, I have to make sure that people, you know, have trust and faith in me as a person. So, you know, what says you should have faith in a company more than putting your name on the actual shoe. With intricate detail and unapologetic style, black female designers have no shortage of creativity to offer within the world of fashion. Mainstream is taking notice, but above that, these black women are employing and empowering themselves to always remember to be about their business.